Give me your favorite Quentin Tarantino story. I'm such a diehard fan of his, and obviously you're so terrific in his films. You got a good Tarantino story? Okay, I'll give you one. Go for uh, it. I'd never met him until a month before he went to do Django. Okay. And he called me up and he said, look, you're the icon of your generation. You don't get credit for it yet. Uh, I had not done Nebraska when he called me. Okay. And uh, so he said, so I have to have you in my movie. I don't have a role for you. If you came down here for a day and I wrote a scene for you, would you do it? In New Orleans, they were shooting New Orleans. I said, sure. So I did that. Then we go to The Hateful Eight, which we shot 1,400 feet, 1,400 feet above Telluride, Colorado, which is 8,900 feet. So we were 10,500 feet, and we started in October and finished in June. 161 shooting days. And uh, what happened was when Sam Jackson gets to all the stuff where he's telling me about what he did to my son and you're watching it on the screen and everything like that, uh, he was having to break sentences because he couldn't get his breath. Mm. So Quentin disassembled the cabin after four months. We had two weeks off in March, and we went back to Hollywood. They brought the cabin back to Hollywood, rebuilt it log by log on the set, and that following Monday, we went back to work to do a lot of the interior stuff where you all the outside stuff had been done and half of the inside stuff. So we were back there, so it was fine. So we walk on the set the first day, and uh, we all have our wardrobe on, you know, and everybody looked like they'd just gotten done uh, coming back from Alaska or something like that, and uh, all that heavy gear. And uh, we were very hot, and Quinn comes in his car, and he goes on another stage, and he says hi to all of us, and he goes on the stage. And we go on the stage, and the guy has refrigerated the stage in Hollywood to 22 degrees Fahrenheit so he could see our breath. Give me a break. <laughs> The point is, if we had done it at the altitude, Sam would have been and everybody else catching their breath after all these long things, and the audience wouldn't know what the hell that was about. Right. So he wanted, he saw our breath there, so he wanted to see our breath. That's, that's a Quinton story. The other Quinton story is, I've been able to work in my life, I feel blessed enough, that I was uh, able to work with six directing geniuses, and not in order of importance, but just they are. Mr. Kazan, Mr. Hitchcock, a kid named Douglas Trumbull, who directed a movie I did called Silent Running, which mm -hmm. is about uh, my companions in space. And then he also directed Brainstorm, the movie which uh, Natalie Wood passed away on. But when he was 19 years old, he won the Academy Award for Special Effects as a senior in Huntington Edison High School down here in Orange County for 2001. At 19, he mm -hmm. did the, that's why he's a genius. And the other three are Francis Coppola, Quentin Tarantino, and Alexander Payne, who directed Nebraska. What makes them geniuses is their approachability on a set. Every single member of the crew, from the honey wagon to the grips to the guys up in the loft with the following spots, anybody is invited at any time to walk up to any one of those directors and say, sir, what is my exact job in this shot? And they'll tell you gladly because they're all professors. You know what I mean? I mean, they don't have the credentials, but they got the credentials for us. And when people say to me and to Jack and Dennis Hopper, when we were all coming up doing all those biker movies, you guys, none of you guys finished college. I went to Penn for two years and quit. Uh, and uh, Jack never went. Redford went for a week at 
Colorado. Uh, Quinn never went. Uh, Burt did go, Burt Reynolds, because he was the first quarterback to take Florida State to a Rose, uh, to a bowl game. Mm-hmm. You know that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you know where we did go? We went to the University of Corman because Roger Corman made movies all through the late 50s and 60s for $300,000 in 10 days. And every actor who was one of the stars of it had to do a job behind the camera as well as his acting job. So we learned how to make the movies they're getting back to making now. The Gateway was made for like a million, million two hundred thousand dollars. And when we did Nebraska, the big fight with Paramount for Alexander Payne was they did not want to make it in black and white. Mm-hmm. They said in Europe there's no resale value in black and white. It has to be color. And I asked Brad Gray, who was running the studio at the time. He's passed now. I said, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't understand. Why are you nixing the black and white? He said, because who's going to give a damn about some old drunk geezer with a dream from a flyover state? And I said, wait a second. He said, we don't do business in those states. I said, well, how many states are flyover states, Brad? He said, nine. The Dakotas, Montana, Idaho, uh, Utah, Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, that are the flyover states. And I said, hey, Brad, wait a minute. You're not making the movie because of that? Well, sir, what do you think they call that area of this country? He said, I don't know, bleak, drab, gray. I said, no, sir, they call it the heartland. Mm. Mm-hmm. And now? And he said to Alexander right then, make your movie, but I'm only going to give you, you I'm taking $10,000, uh, $10 million out of your budget. Well, Alexander and I smile because for, for a million dollars, we made four movies with Roger Corman. So we're back to the day where you, you cut every corner, you broke every rule. I mean, we never had police permits or anything else. We just went and shot it. And the first movie I did for Roger uh, was called The Wild Angels, starred me and Peter Fonda and Nancy Sinatra. And uh, it was a biker movie, you know, where we were Hell's Angels. I love it. And uh, Jack love it. wrote the script for the next one, which was called uh, The Trip. And uh, it was it, it was just an era, and you know what I I remember one time that Ron Howard I did a movie for him called The Burbs yes uh, with Tom Hanks also it was a very funny movie it's cute and uh, in The Burbs uh, Hanks is a, a pathetic Cleveland fan I mean a Cleveland Indian fan and he grew up in Sacramento so I mean get over it but I mean he's a uh, Anyway, so he, he, he's, an, he's an avid baseball fan like that. But while we were doing the movie, um, one day uh, he brought two guests. Well, one of the two guests was Cowboy Joe West, who was his first year as an umpire. And this was 1988. And I forget the other guy he brought with him was... Uh, a guy that looked just like Steve Garvey, that size, that build, and everything else. And they were the two that came together that day. But uh, Joe West is no one to F with, if you know what I mean, <laughs> on behind the plate or on the <laughs> yeah. So I grew up, I grew up with an appreciation, and to this day, it's my greatest appreciation. Can I use a swear word or not? Go for it. I really admire people that get done. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.